you're watching Metallicomania, and I'm back with another video, which is a ranking video for Sabaton. Um, every time Sabaton releases, I do a ranking to put the new album where I think it belongs at the start, and then the next time they release, you'll see where I put the newest album this time. Um... Just to say, The Great War actually moved up. Um, a couple of them moved up. Yeah. Um, I have different opinions on the Sabaton album now than I did back then. Uh, albums that I did back then. I thought I'd do another video about it. So, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it with number 10. Because they have 10 studio albums now. Same as Metallica. What the hell is with Metallica? Come on, guys. You have 10 studio albums in a band that's like... 20 years younger than your band has released the same amount of albums. Um, yeah. Um, let's go right into it. Number 10, you all know, Metalizer. Metalizer, for me, is not as bad as everybody thinks it is. A lot of people hate this album. I actually consider this a 9 out of 10. And you know, every other album up above it is 10 out of 10. I like every single song Sabaton's done on every single album. Even this one, but this one's a little bit, like, more boring, not as, like, Sabaton sounding. So I don't really hate anything on here. The, my favorite one on here is, like, Thunderstorm Speeder, Masters of the World, Thunder Gods, Hell Rider. Those songs, absolutely amazing album. I think this album gets shit on too much, and people should go back and actually listen to it. Because it's it shows the band, like, what they started at, and, like... Then their next album was actually way better, but showed what they started at, and uh, it actually showed what they started at. Um, number nine, Atero Dominatus. Um, yeah, their third album, the one, no, their was supposed to be the third album, the second album, Metal is their third. Um, yeah, same, same thing, uh, really have nothing to say about why this is, like, not as good as the other ones, but it's just how I rank it. Like, if this was any other band, this would be their top album. This is actually a pretty good album, in my opinion. There's a lot of good stuff on it, like Rise of Evil. Holy shit, this song's about the rise of Hitler, for God's sakes. Um, I should have given... Uh, warning about the topic some, uh, that they sing about. Yeah, he will come up. The grand um, asshole of history will come up. Nuclear Attack, Atero Dominatus, the, uh, I think it was uh, the army closing into Berlin. I really do like that song. Um, In the Name of God, which is about uh, terrorism. We Burn, Angels Calling, which is about... Uh, I think the First World War. They did a few albums about the First World War. Afterwards, Back in Control, Light in the Black. No, I don't think the Angel is calling. Probably got it wrong. I don't know. Leave in the comments what that one's about. I Metal Crew. I did that last time I fucked up some of them. But, oh well. Um, number 8. Art of War. Usually, people, usually really high on people's list. Like... It's a good album, but it's not as good as their other stuff. I definitely like their other albums, their newer stuff, better than this. And one of their older albums better than this. Um, it has Ghost Division. They play Ghost Division every time at the start of their set. Like, there's no uh, downside to this album. Like, it has no downside. They have Title Check, Art of War, which is an absolute monster. You have uh, 40 to 1. Unbreakable 40 to 1 is a playable as a downloadable DLC on Rocksmith. If you didn't know, um, The Nature of Warfare, Cliffs of Gallipoli, Healthy Soda, Panzerkampf. Panzerkampf is pretty good as well. That that riff just just gives it that. <clears throat> it's about Panzers. Like you gotta have the uh, sound of a Panzer. You have to have that dread that big boom sound on the guitars if you want to convey a song about panzers um union slopes of st benedict the price of a mile which i know is about passchendaele um 
I know that one's about fashion deal. Firestorm and The Secret. This album has no downsides. It's just all the way, it's good all the way through, but I prefer other albums over it. Um, number seven, let's go into number seven, Primo Victoria, the uh, first album, the first album, because Metalizer was recorded prior to this, but didn't get released because of the label. Um, yeah, that title track is a set staple. They'll always play that live. I'm betting like every single time I would go see them. I've seen them twice, by the way. Um, they would play that every time. Reign of Terror, which is about Saddam Hussein. Um, Premier Victoria about D-Day. Panzer Battalion, Wolf Pack, which is about the Kriegsmarine, which is the German uh, World War II uh, submarines. They're, I think it's about the U-boats. It, yeah, it's actually about the U-boats, not the Kriegsmarine. Kriegsmarine's another song. Um, Counter-Strike, Stalingrad, about the Battle of Stalingrad. Into the Fire, Purple Heart, which is a uh, war award a medal given to uh, soldiers that are either killed in war or wounded in the United States. Um, one of my favorite, one of my favorite Sabaton songs ever. I absolutely love the Purple Heart song. Uh, metal Machine. Metal Machine is about the history of heavy metal. Holy shit! If you want to like get in, like get into the depth, there's a channel for this. It's called uh, Sabaton History. They have like almost explanations of every song they've ever done, except the new ones. They haven't gotten around to the new ones yet. Number six, Coat of Arms. I thought this one would be a lot higher when listening to it. This one was like almost the bottom last time. But yeah, re-listening to this album, I think it's way better than what I thought it was. So I didn't really like the song Coat of Arms and Screaming Eagles. Now I do. Like Coat of Arms, Midway, Midway, the Battle of Midway, <laughs> Uprising, Screaming Eagles, The Final Solution. That song is about the Holocaust. Um, very dark subject matter and the uh, whole like they got it they got it they got it completely right with how the song is like built like a lot of people would probably uh, go with a more bloody gory it's this time it's more of a uh, like a sadder song like more of the slowest song in the album that's how it should be aces in exile saboteur saboteur is my least favorite on this album white death or Warmacht, White Death. Warmacht being the German military in World War II. The Warmacht, that's what they had here. And it definitely has that, like, German military, like, part, that riff that they have in their sounds. That it fits the song heavily. White Death and Metal Ripper. The Metal Ripper song is just about, uh, it's literally... Them paying tribute to like Judas Priest metal, uh, the Ripper song off the uh, Sad Wings of Destiny, and White Death is about the uh, sniper that was in like three armies, and they have another song about him too. Um, absolutely love this uh, band. That brings us to number five, which is the newest album. Um, yeah, this album's not uh, old enough yet, in my opinion. Maybe it'll be up a little bit higher, but it definitely is better than the older stuff. The older, older, like Sapton, Sarajavo, Stormtroopers. A lot of people are complaining about Sarajavo, saying it's like a, not a proper song, but it's more of like an explanation, like, like more of a bring into it, and is less of a uh, like an actual serious song. It's more of like, here's the introduction to this album. Here's the introduction to what the subject matter is. And I do like that. It kind of gives a little more explanation. Like, you see a lot of these bands do these concept albums about this stuff and just go right full blast. It's like, can you please give me an explanation before you actually go full blast? Or maybe give me a little bit of a, like, feel, feel for it. Stormtroopers, Dreadnought, The Unkillable Soldier, Soldier of Heaven, Hellfighters, Race to the Sea, Lady of the Dark. Valley of Death, tr Christmas Truce, and Versailles. Um, yeah, I posted a full exp a full review on this album before, so go check that out if you want to hear a lot more about this album. Um, four, The Last Stand. The Last Stand is a... People hate on this album. You either love this album or hate it. 
Like, I've seen a lot of people that absolutely hate this album, and I don't get why. It's, it's, it's a pretty fucking good album. It's got stuff like Sparta. It goes everything. Like, this... It, this is like Last Stands from history. Like, all of history. You have Sparta, Last Dying Breath, Black, Blood of Bannockburn, Dire of an Unknown Soldier. A lot of people complain about that, saying, why is that in there? It's to give the whole aspect of, like, war in general. Um... It's talking about the Argonne, which then goes into the Lost Battalion, which that was a battalion, 307 U.S. U.S. was lost was lost in the Argonne trap behind enemy lines, and that's why that song is there, just just uh, to display how bad the Argonne really was. Rourke Strip, the Last Stand, the sacking of Rome, Hill, two uh, three two three four. Shariyama, Ling Tazar, and the Last Battle, about the castle, it's, it's, it's her, I think it's called, where uh, Germans and the German army and the American army fought to keep the SS away from prisoners. I absolutely love that song. It's one of the best songs they've ever done, and I don't know why they don't play it live. They should play it live. It's a great song. Um, going into number three, Heroes. Heroes, uh, this one was actually lower on the uh, album ranking last time. Um, yeah, songs like Night, Night Witches, No Bullets Fly, and Smoking Snakes. Holy shit. Inmate 4859, about a, a soldier that purposely got captured and went to Auschwitz to uh, escape and then give intelligence. You should read up on that story. That's a great, great, great song. Absolutely great song and story. To Hell and Back, um, uh, Audie Murphy, I think it is, Audie Murphy, um, Ballad of Bull, Resist and Bite, Soldier of Three Armies, like I said before, The White Death, Far From, Far From the Fame, Hearts of Iron, Hearts of Iron is amazing, Far From the Frame is a little bit iffy for me, I like the song, it's perfect for the album, but it, yeah, so yeah, I like this, I like this, uh, Heroes album, it's a concept album about, like, different heroes from different wars, I definitely like it, I think it's a, a one that fits pretty well with their discography, and number two was actually a change from last time, I think it was, uh, Last Stand last time, it's actually Caloris Rex, this is my favorite last time, I moved down, and you already know which number one, um, you can already see what number one is, it's actually on the screen already, um, so yeah, since that video, I did pick up the Swedish version and the English version. I would consider them as good as each other. I would, I'm not going to put the Swedish version on here separately. I know a lot of people do that, and I just don't know why they're kind of like this, like as good as each other. I just like to have them both. Um, the Minimum Mars, I don't even know how to say that. The first track is amazing. It's a good intro track. Then Line from the North is just like full speed ahead. Like the fastest sound song song they've ever done with the top with the top string. Um Got Mit Unz for the the top the big E string, the large E string on the top. Um Got Mit Unz. A Lifetime of War. Lifetime of War. Absolutely awesome. Got Mit Unz awesome. 1648. That song is awesome as well. If you didn't know, this is about Swedish history. Um, probably their most inspired album outside, like, number one. Kalorian's Prayer, Kalorus Rex, Killing Ground, Kalorian's Kler Prayer. Um, Kalorus Rex is about the, uh, the uh, king, but the king of, of uh, Sweden. Killing Ground, Poltava, Long Live the King, and Runa and Perry absolutely amazing songs um has a lot of songs about the uh 40 years war the decades of war um or the holy roman war whichever one you want to call it and uh number one sabaton's the great war the uh predecessor to the the album that just came out a couple of days ago and yeah, I do think this album is their absolute best, and it's the 
just the song at the start, Future of Warfare, it's like, brings the whole, like, gas tanks, crazy machinery, like, the colonial way of doing war, the line up and shoot type of warfare is gone, it's yesterday, but you're gonna get this full on destruction, and there's no, and there's no stopping it, there's gonna be trenches, there's gonna be gas, there's gonna be all this other shit that shouldn't be, uh, Seven Pillars of Wisdom, 82nd All the Way, um, Alvin York, Attack of the Dead Men, about the uh, Russian troops that uh, got uh, got gas and then uh, somehow fought back when they were like bleeding and the coughing up their lungs and everything from the gas. Um, Devil Dogs, about the U.S. Marines during... Um, Bellowood, I think it's called. Yeah, Bellowood. About the, uh, in the Battle of Bellowood. The Red Baron, about the uh, Air Ace, the German Air Ace. The, the Red Baron. The Great War, the, the Great War, the title track. Ghost in the Trenches. Fields of Verdun. Ghost in the Trenches is actually one of the best songs on this album. Fields of Verdun is about Verdun. The end of war, the end of the war to end all wars is a great send off song, really heavy and just gives you that whole like it's over, but it's a chaotic ending. And then in Flanders Field is like more of like a uh, good send off, uh, mellow send like one minute, almost two minute track that just goes and goes and goes and then just ends, just. The sound on this album is way better than anything they've done prior or since. It's way better than their newer album. It's their best album by all shots. It will never be passed, probably. The new album is never going to pass this album. So, that's what I think of Sabaton's albums. That's how I rank Sabaton. Leave a comment on how you rank Sabaton. Kind of... Like, getting sinus problems right now, if, if you can hear it. For some reason, I'm just getting sinus problems right now, but oh well. Maybe I need more Miller. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, this is why I do the outro. The outro is in, every, in almost every video. Sometimes I don't do it. What, follow my TikTok, sometimes I do like uh, mini album reviews, mini album stuff. And uh, yeah, I've been neglecting it lately. I haven't posted on TikTok for a long time. Kind of want to change that. Maybe I'll upload uh, tomorrow, tonight. I don't know. But then follow my Instagram. I give updates on albums when I like get them. Um, or when I upload, when I upload, so you get a... Uh, There'll be a post on my Instagram that says, oh, video up, album review up. Uh, I don't do posts for rankings, though. Um, yeah, so if you guys enjoyed it, um, hope you will subscribe. I know I'm a little bit tired and not feeling too hot, but I decided to sabotage. It's quiet. It's quiet in the house, so excited. I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to do it tonight. I'm... So... See you guys in the next video.